You ready? Yes. Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to Up in Your Business with Carrie McCoy, a production of FlagandBanner.com. Through storytelling and conversational interviews, this weekly radio show offers listeners firsthand insight into starting and running a business, the ups and downs of risk taking, and the commonalities of successful people. Connect with Carrie through her candid, often funny, and informative weekly blog, where you'll read and can comment on life as wife, mother, daughter, and entrepreneur. And now it's time for Carrie McCoy to get all up in your business. I'm Carrie McCoy, and like Tim said, it's time for me to get up in your business. Before we start, I'd like to introduce the people at the table. We have who you just heard from, Tim Bowen, our technician, who will be taking your calls and pushing the buttons. Say hello, Tim. Hello, Tim. And recording our show to make a podcast available next week is our technician, Jesse. Thank you, Jesse. No problem. This show, Up In Your Business, with me, Carrie McCoy, began with Entrepreneurs in Mind, a platform for me, a small business owner and a guest, to pay forward our experiential knowledge in a conversational way. As with all new endeavors, it has had some unexpected outcomes, like the show is not just for entrepreneurs and wannabe entrepreneurs, but for everyone. We are all inspired by everyday people's American-made stories of how they worked hard, took risks, and found their voice. Another is that business is creative more so than I ever thought. And our guest today, Maxie, is super creative with what he's done with his business. I was going to say my guest today is plural because I sent out an email saying that we were going to have two guests and that we were going to do something that we've never done before. We were, this will be the first time we've ever had returning guests from an earlier show. So a few months ago... I had Maxie on. Actually, it was more than a few months ago. It was December of yeah. 2016. It's like a year and three months. Yeah, that's how long ago you were on. And you had been in business for maybe a year. You were really starting to find your voice, your creativity, and things were going really w- well for you. And then today, you're going to come back on and tell us how the past year has been. And I have to give a shout out to Tim because that was Tim's idea. That's right. Thank you. You're welcome. So we were going to also have on Corey Bulkins. If anybody got our e-blast earlier today, we were going to have Corey Bulkins on from Raft Up. He also was a startup um, company that came on and talked to us, um, let's see, it would have been February of 2017. So it's been one year since he was on. But I just got an email from him. He's running behind. He may not make it to the show today. So we'll book again with him. But what I do want to do is with this brave entrepreneur I have here, Maxie Dominguez from, say it again. (laughs) Rise Apparel. Rise Apparel. We're going to find out what what his past year's been like. And like a Clint Eastwood movie, we're going to hear the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm -hmm. Raw. Straight raw. Oh, you need to put that on one of your shirts. (laughs) If you're just tuning in for the first time, you may be asking yourself, what's this lady's story and why does she have a radio show? Well, Tim is here to tell you. Thank you, Carrie. Over 40 years ago, with only $400, Carrie McCoy founded Arkansas Flag and Banner. During the last four decades, the business has grown and changed dramatically, from door-to-door sales to telemarketing to mail order and catalog sales, and now Flag & Banner relies heavily on the internet, including our newest feature, live chatting. Each decade required a change in sales strategy and procedures. Her business and leadership knowledge grew with time and experience, as well as the confidence to branch out into multimedia marketing that began with our nonprofit Dreamland Ballroom, as well as our in-house publication, Brave Magazine, and this very radio show you're listening to right now. Each week on the show, you will hear candid conversations between her and our guests about real-world experiences on a variety of businesses and topics that we hope you'll find interesting. Carrie says that many business rules, like treat your employees well, know your profit margin, and have a succession plan can be applied across most industries. What I found encouraging is that her example that hard work pays off. Did you know that for nine years while starting Flag and Banner, she supplemented her income with many part-time jobs? And that just shows that persistence, perseverance, and patience prevail. Today, Flag and Banner has 10 departments, and I have 25 coworkers. It reminds us all that small businesses are the fuel of our country's economic engine and that they empower people's lives. 
If you would like to ask Carrie a question or share your experience or story, you can send an email to questions at upyourbusiness.org. We've invited back a previous guest, entrepreneur Maxi Dominguez of Riaz Apparel. Did I say it wrong? You're so close. You're so close. What is with me in words? It's, you know, and it's funny. Say it again. Raiz. Raiz. Why don't you spell it that way? Uh, you know, I'm actually working on a marketing plan to get people to be able to pronounce it correctly. I know it's a really hard word to, you know, It's pick Spanish, up. isn't it? Right. And what does it mean? A root and or origin. Root? And or origin. It has like two separate meanings, but uh, I usually just tell people root because it has like a whole metaphor behind it. Mm-hmm. Raiz. I'm going to get it from now on. <laughs> Maxi Dominguez from Raiz Apparel, which aired his show on Up In Your Business With Me, aired on December of 2016. Today, we're going to get an update on how it's been since we last talked, because I haven't seen you. Yeah, it's been a while. Uh, Maxi is the founder and the designer behind the Raiz Apparel, a trendy clothing line with edgy photo- photography of models wearing his casual wear that has sassy sayings like, shred it. True love, <laughs> mercy, or mercy. And you've probably got some more you can tell us about. Maxie found his sales channels to be social media, band shows, and his favorite, the skater culture. Hence the term, shred it. <laughs> it is a pleasure to welcome to the table one of my early on interviews on UIYB, Mr. Maxie Dominguez. Hello, hello. So how's it been? Uh, it's been great. i um, just been staying busy. Um, this past year has honestly been probably one of the best years I've uh, I've experienced in my 20s. And um, yeah, really no complaints. Just a bunch of good things. Maybe a few struggles here and there, but... You know, uh, Mark Abernathy was on last week and he talked about how it's the struggles that make you the better business people and that you learn the most there. And I want to hear what those struggles have been. But what's the, f- the first question I want to ask you is... Would you do it again? Oh, yeah, definitely. Sounds Without, like it. No question. Was it harder than you originally thought? A lot harder. Um, I thought it was just going to be, honestly, fun and games. And um, as I grew older and every year, just I just realized it got harder and harder. And um, I love it, though. I love it. It pushes me. It makes me a better person. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Did you go? So I want to tell everybody that when I met you, you came with um, the president of Pulaski Tech. What was her name? Oh, my <laughs> gosh. I should, I should know this. Uh, I should. I should. We all should. I uh, know. I can't believe I'm it's just slipped my things. mind. Uh-huh. But she, anyway, she, she spoke really well of you, and she wanted you to come. You were one of her favorite students at Pulaski Tech. You took entrepreneur classes out, the, out at her school, mm-hmm. and she was hoping that you would go out and get your feet wet and then come back to school. Did you ever come back to school? I haven't yet, um, but it's definitely in my agenda. Um, you know, the like I said, this past year has been a very big year for me in terms of development and growth. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you just have to, you know, put things, categorize things. Right now, I feel like I'm in a place where I can't give school my all. So I really feel like I need to focus on my business ventures and, and just solely focus on that. Um, tell our listeners what your business is. I kind of gave them a overview of what it is but kind of tell um, our listeners a, what your view it's a fashion label it's called raise apparel um it was actually started in 2013 um it started as a diy project just uh, something more of a creative outlet that i kind of just stumbled upon um my niece maggie she uh she was sewing at the time she was kind of getting her feet wet with fashion and uh, I kind of just picked up on that. It was a uh, an idea that developed itself into a business. Honestly, do you sew? Yes, yes, I do. And are you sewing your t- so you're putting your fashion designs? You're mostly screen printing on already purchased t-shirts, right? Right. Um, and what's funny is it actually started just as sewing. Um, no, no screen printing involved at the beginning. But I thought you bought finished goods, like already finished hats and already finished T-shirts. Yeah, so I, um, now I'm at the point where I just kind of, I wholesale garments. And I purchase wholesale garments and then just embellish them into what into what my vision is. So when you first started sewing, what were you sewing if you were buying already? Uh, I actually started with pocket T-shirts. Um, in 2013, in the fashion industry, 
this whole new trend of pocket tees came out of nowhere and it was a hit. It was a huge, huge hit. It was just simple color t-shirts with a small square where I had to print on it. And I, I saw that, I saw potential in it. And I thought to myself, how hard is it to just, you know, sew straight, three, uh, three straight lines. And um, my niece, you know, she was sewing at the time. I told her, hey, teach me how to sew a straight line. That's all I need to know. She taught me how to sew a straight line. And I picked up on that idea like, hey, I can, I'm gonna I'm a go buy some print, put it on a t-shirt, and see what I can do with it. So the pockets you were buying already made T-shirts. You were buying a, you were buying printed material, and you were just sewing a print a printed pocket onto a shirt. Yep, I would just go to Walmart, um, buy a T-shirt or Hobby Lobby. I'd go to Hobby Lobby or Joann's, pick up some fabric, and uh, with a little bit of help with uh, YouTube, I, I was able to. Um, so my first pocket t-shirt. Were they just solid colored fabric or were you putting words on them already? On uh, the no, I was just, there weren't solid uh, color fabrics. They were, um, they had prints on them, whether mm -hmm. it be like paisleys or tie dye. How did uh, you know that was popular? I guess just, you know, at that time being 17, 18 years old, I kind of was um, heavily involved with the culture that made me who I am today. What culture is that? Which is the skateboarding culture, more or less. Um, it's kind of, it's, you know, given me I guess the characteristics of who I am today and yeah. And that's probably not a very, um, well maybe it is, I was gonna say it's probably not a, a, a segment that's that's uh, marketed too much, but maybe it is. Maybe. Um, over the years, the, the industry and the market has actually, in terms of fashion, has really focused on the skateboarding culture. Um, if you look at the trends in uh, fashion, a lot of it's picked up from simply the culture of skateboarding, the way the skateboarders dress, the graphics that they put onto it. Um, you see some, honestly, some very high fashion labels now replicate that. Um, and what's funny is the skateboarding culture was never out to, you know, be a fashion, you know, be fashion enthusiast or anything. We were just, we were just kids, you know, wanting to skateboard every day, maybe with a little bit of like a rebellious um, attitude. And it, it, ca it caught people's attention, um, not just everyday people, but, people, professionals, businesses, they caught on to that and they saw how marketable it was, how, how much influence the skateboarding culture had that now, you know, here we are in 2018 where fashion is mainly driven by that culture. You are mainstream, you probably don't like it. The skaters have become mainstream. Uh, that's a, you're right, it has become mainstream and we hate it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think this is a great place to take a break. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation with Maxi Dominguez of the trendy casual wear Reyes Apparel. Um, and I want to take this next segment where we dig deep into what the first few years of your business have been like, what you did right, what was unexpected, and maybe what you could have done, changed if you would have changed anything at all. And at the bottom of the hour, we'll be taking calls, so listen and get your questions ready. Listen to all UIYB past and present interviews by going to flagandbanner.com and clicking on Radio Show. Also, by joining our email list and liking us on Facebook, you'll get a reminder notification the day of the show with a sneak peek of that day's guest. Back to you, Carrie. You're listening to Up In Your Business with me, Carrie McCoy. I'm speaking today with Maxi Dominguez, founder of Reyes Apparel in Little Rock, Arkansas. You said... Now, for anybody that's just tuning in, Maxie was a guest of mine in December of 2016. He's been in business since he was 18. He's, what, 22 now? 24. <laughs> oh, 24 now. Uh, this venture started at 18. It's, but, but he yeah. got his first idea yeah, there we at go. 18. Um, and so we're going to – I haven't talked to him in a year and three months, so we're going to uh, catch up and find out what his year's like, see how he's matured and grown and what the – struggles have been you said that you had a lot of development and growth in the last segment and some struggles give me an example um well i guess a development of mine was that i finally took things from a creative aspect into a business aspect uh and i think that was one of my biggest stepping stones um with my business i mean like i said it all started as just an idea a, a project more or less and now I see it as a career. I see it um, as the way I make a living. And 
it's still, you know, I still at the core of it all is still the um, a canvas for me where I can express myself and I can put my passion into something and be proud of what I do every day. But um, yeah, I'd say that was my biggest stepping stone, just taking it, learning from to take things from just an idea to a business. How can I, you know, profit from this? How can I make a career more or less out of it? That dirty word profit always gets in the way, doesn't it? (laughs) It's like, I wish I didn't have to make a living that I could just do what I wanted to do and not have to worry about money. But do you have employees now? Uh, yeah, um, I have, I, I don't like calling them employees. I like calling them more, more of a team, you know. That's people, what you said the year and a half ago. I remember it's, that. And it's, it's always going to be that way. Um, you know, my vision can only be real with the ones that are next to me at all times without anybody who I work, uh, who works with me. It wouldn't happen. Who, who is on your team? Um, so I have, for example, a graphic designer. His name is Andrew and what's really cool is like he doesn't even live here he lives in cincinnati and he's been with us for about mm, i'd say about six to eight months now um and what he does is he just pretty much perfects all of my the ideas i have you know i have i'm i'm an amateur graphic designer but that's what he does for a living so being able to have somebody like him on the team really makes my ideas perfect Um, pop yeah it makes it pop he you know he throws in his two cents that really um takes my idea sometimes to the next level or sometimes you know i have a rough sketch or something in my head that i just can't fully put it onto paper or on screen or whatever um and he helps me with that how'd you hook up with him is he a skater or did you find him in Uh, networking it's just networking um through the early stages of the brand he saw the potential in it and he actually just kind of started reaching out he was a a big supporter of the brand even it's in early stages and is he a skater no no he's just a graphic designer but he liked the brand yeah yeah you don't have to be a skater to like the brand you know there's a lot of meaning behind the brand and i think that's something that really pulls people in your new one that i saw online your new slogan love it what is it love? true love true love who mm-hmm. doesn't love that um, you know, and that I, that's one of the collections, honestly, I'm most proud of that. Um, and I always say that about the newest collection I come out with, but this one in particular was one that I had a lot of fun putting together just because I feel like I was able to put a lot of <laughs> heart in it. <laughs> uh, how many collections have you done? Um, right now I think I'm up to four or five, I think four. So when I saw you a year and a half ago, you were wearing a t-shirt that said shred it. Yeah, and that was actually my first collection, my first official collection, Uh and it was called The World is Ours. And I think that's kind of true. And then the next one was? Uh, The next one was called Forever Wicked. Oh, I love that one. (laughs) That one definitely had more of an edge to it. Mm -hmm. Um, It definitely made people question a lot of the graphics that we used, a lot of the... What were the graphics? Uh, I mean, one was like, we had a shirt that we call the Temptation t-shirt, and it said Lift by Sin on the front, and on the back it had um, a, f- a girl, the face of a girl who's smoking a cigarette with her hand. Um, and people just, you know, it makes them double, take a second look. It reminded me of, I saw it on your website, it reminded me of the Virginia Slim commercials when I was growing up. <laughs> they always made that girl look so hot and sexy, smoking her <laughs> cigarettes, and everybody wanted to do that. That's perfect. I love that. <laughs> Maybe I need to look at the video and take some inspo from it. Uh, and then what was the next one? Um, what was it? You've got something with roses all over it. Uh, most of my collections honestly have roses. In You've them. got roses all over you. If people can't see you, but yeah. you're tattooed <laughs> in them, and your girlfriend is too. <laughs> they all I tattoos everywhere, and they always will have roses. I love roses. So when you're talking about sin, I bet you're Catholic. I was born into the Catholic Church. Yes. I bet I can tell. I bet you're from Argentina, right? Mm-hmm. What does your mother think about that? Uh, what that I was? No, that you've got a T-shirt that says "Born to Sin" or "Live by Sin." You know, at first when I started, she definitely was like, "What? What is going on?" You know, like, "What are you? What? Why are you putting these things on T-shirts?" <laughs> Tell me. And after you know, I kind of gave her my my views on it. She. Took what is that view on it? What the "Live by Sin" thing? Um, it's more of a not. I'm not you know telling people to sin, but I'm telling people to embrace sin. Um, I feel and believe that the 
uh, in our existence, sin is an inevitable thing. We all sin, whether you want to or not, whether you're religious or not, you're still going to sin at the end of the day. And I think we hold ourselves back by trying to live this false reality that we are, we don't sin, that we don't do bad. Um, I feel like there's a lot of empowerment in the idea of embracing it. And it, when you, em- you can embrace something like that, you can develop, you can develop as a person from it. It's like, it's breaking barriers, mental barriers, I feel like. And, um, I was able to do it and I feel like, um, it definitely developed me as a person. And I don't know, I feel like it's all about opening your mind, you know, it's releasing the shame. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. I no wonder I like you. <laughs> Really, though, I do think people are embarrassed by their sin. Yeah. And when you just think, oh, well, everybody does, just learn from it, go on, or whatever. You right. know? I love the way you said that, too. All right, so then we've got another one. Uh, what was it, honestly? Hold Forever it, hold it. I can you. almost think of it. I just looked at your website. Uh, love. Oh, Mercy. 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 How could I not remember that one? That one's awesome, too. Yeah. Okay, had, let's tell, it, tell it, us how. It had a lot of powerful imagery. Um What's really cool about the Mercy Collection, it was actually a collaboration with Andrew, the um, the guy from Cincinnati. The graphic artist. Right. And um, he actually kind of has, he doesn't have a brand, but he brands himself as a certain entity. He goes by Never Leave. And I fell in love with his art style. I mean, it's really dark. It's all black and white, but powerful. It's powerful imagery. And we were, him and I got together. And we did this collaboration for the Mercy Collection. And after that, I mean, we had so much fun doing it and we worked so well together that that's when he decided, you know, like he wanted to be more involved with the brand and we brought him onto the team. Your other, uh, another person on your team is a photographer and an excellent photographer, Mm -hmm. I must say. I love the photographs. Yeah. And what's cool is um, we, this past year, we've, you know, we've collaborated with a lot of other photographers and with other creatives. And that's something that's very important to raise. Um, you know, we have our vision, but we, I strongly believe that through collaboration and working with other people who are creative, you're able to build on your vision and you're able to, you know, expand your mind, your creativity. And honestly, you never know, you never know where you can go when you meet certain people, when you work with certain people, um, I know I've personally developed from working with many, many other creative people. I love the one of them. There's a man, there's a guy on your website who's under a bridge, and I think he's wearing the Mercy T-shirts. And his that photographer looked like it was somebody different from who you used before. Uh-huh. Yeah, and like I said, we, we've worked with many photographers, and that's I enjoy it so much. And tell me why that guy's wearing such high-rise pants on that, on that, on that uh, ad, on that. Which one? It's he's under a bridge and it says F Trump and Oh <laughs> and he's got and he's got really high rise uh-huh. pants on. Yep. Higher than you see on most models and you're showing off his t shirt. Uh-huh. You're not selling the pants. But he's got really high rise mm-hmm. Um, pants on like from the 70s and I was kind of curious about it's that. It's super in. I mean, honestly, I loved it. the 70s and the 80s like trends and, and style there, it's all coming back in. Um, it was very metrosexual. I, yeah, and it's I loved it. It's, I think it was great and um, we like to do that. You know, we like to make people like question even the way that we dress our people, the models in our, in our photos and in our vision, yeah. Okay, I, I loved it. So you got the graphic guy, you got the photographer. Who else is on your team? Who sells, and how do you sell? Who's your customer? Sales, um, really, it's just me. We, the way I have it, it's, you know, nowadays everything is online. So what I do is I kind of focus on creating campaigns, and through those campaigns, I implement marketing plans in order to in order to reach certain audiences. Are they Facebook campaigns? Facebook and Instagram. Um, Are those your two? You were using almost like Tumblr, I think. The last uh, it time was I was Twitter. I was, was using Twitter, Twitter a lot. Um, I kind of stepped a little bit back from it. I think I just found a lot more impact through Facebook and Instagram. So that's kind of what I've been doing. But Instagram and Facebook has been changing over the year, and it's making it more difficult to, you know, execute these marketing plans in order to reach these audiences. But at the so end, so what of- are you gonna do? Uh, well, right now I'm kind of, that's what I'm kind of, I'm working on. I'm kind of, you know, messing with these plans a little bit 
see what I have to do. Maybe I have to, you know, pay, make more paid promotions or whatever it may be. Have you been using Facebook campaigns without paying for any promotions? Yeah. And, you know, I'm really surprised. I'm really surprised that I've been able to create a reach and an impact without using um, paid promotion. So I'm kind of curious as to like when I do start putting more. You money were also into it. Uh, doing a lot of going to cons, bands, and concerts, and outdoor. I don't know if you were doing. Yeah, skater. we were. We were. Uh, we went. For example, like we went to Dallas um, for a music festival called So What Music Fest. Um, it was really cool, and you know that wasn't the first time or last time that we did that. We've um, we've definitely been involved in other local shows. Um, we've even thrown our own events to uh, really get the community together. Do you sell enough to make it worth your time to go oh, down definitely. there? Oh, definitely. 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 So when's your next uh, band event? Uh, well, we don't have a band event, but my friend um, Zach, he actually has a brand as well, and he he's having a release um, March 9th, actually. What's he, what's, what, you mean a clothing line? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you'd be, you'd be surprised. There's a lot of us out here. Y'all are going to end up with a department store on Facebook. <laughs> they should come up with something like that. Like minds all grouped together into one huge kind of uh, mall, Facebook mall. Yeah, and, you know, we do have little groups um, on Facebook and Instagram of local creatives who are coming together to build our creative community here. So we talked about one of your struggles, which is Facebook is changing ever changing yeah it's the algorithm um things used to be a lot different on social media and now now it's at a point where um they're really instagram and facebook is are doing their best to try and uh, squeeze money out of you in order to be relevant nowadays which is a shame it's a shame that you know we can't just use a platform um, like that and just be able to express ourselves and be able to, you know, mm-hmm. Marla, talk to our audience. Marla from Aristotle was on here about six months ago, and she was in the beginning of the Internet, and she used to just love Google and just because it was just an information age. I mean, we're just the information age. You could just get on there and research and do anything, and she pretty much said the same thing you just said. She's disenchanted with Google, trying to make a yeah. dollar all the time. It's not nearly as... I don't know. Um, it's stressful. The stress on, on just using those platforms has just constantly It's been all about headache. money, whereas before yeah. it was kind of creative. Exactly. And now it's, 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 yeah, back to the big big money. So um, you talked about you wanted to move to a bigger center c- city. You wanted to have brick and mortar. I don't want to talk about that yet because it's time for us to take <laughs> a break. But when we're going to come back, I want to hear some about that. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation with entrepreneur Maxi Dominguez from the trendy casual wear, Ray, I'm going to say it right, Reyes. <laughs> Reyes, right? Reyes. Why can I not say that right? Reyes Apparel in Little Rock, <laughs> Arkansas. If you've been considering making the leap to self-employment, what we say next may be the catalyst that pushes you over the edge into becoming one or maybe not into becoming your own boss. And if you have any questions for either, for, for either of us, either me or Maxie, uh, when we come back, Tim will give you the phone number right after the break. Listen to all UIYB past and present interviews by going to flagandbanner.com and clicking on radio show. Also, by joining our email list and liking us on Facebook, you'll get a reminder notification the day of the show with a sneak peek of that day's guest. Back to you, Carrie. You're listening to Up In Your Business with me, Carrie McCoy. I'm speaking today with Maxie Dominguez, founder of Raiz Apparel. I finally said it it right. That's because Liz walked over here and wrote it out for me the way it should be written in English. I just found out uh, from one of our (laughs) uh, employees at Flag and Banner that Maxie here is good friends with two of our co-workers. If you want to give shout outs to them, you know our showroom manager and our assistant accountant, Malia and Adrian, correct? Yep, that's right. Well, that was uh, Adrian that just gave us that uh, last little infomercial. She's a good girl. So uh, at the beginning of the show, in the intro, I said we were going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. And we kind of got into talking about a little bit of the strife in your life because Facebook keeps constantly changing their algorithms. And now you're having to work for profit. Have you gotten any more employees since the last time I talked to you? Um, or, or are 
or are they all subcontractors? No, uh, I haven't gotten more employees for Raiz, but I have gotten more employees for my other business, which is Wicked Rose. Bring it, baby. What is that? <laughs> so um, a year ago, um, January last year, I started Wicked Rose Printing Company, which is a screen printing business. Um, you know, simply put, but I, I don't like to call it a screen printing business. I like to call it a creative platform. Um but I do that. My main service that I offer through Wicked Rose is screen printing and T-shirts. Yep, screen printing T-shirts or whatever you can bring me, I'll print on it. How big's your biggest screen? Um, I have a twenty-four by twenty, so that's usually don't ever have to go bigger than that. People don't remember. Nobody remembers probably our last. We talked at length about screen printing the last time I interviewed mm-hmm. you because flags were screen printed when I first started doing it. That's how we made flags back then. And I have screens that are five by 15 feet. Oh, wow. It takes two people to screen print and pull the squeegee. I believe it. That's impressive. And I was going to look for some and give you some. Oh, I would, I'll take them. <laughs> I know you would. I, I can't think of where they are right now. Um, so what is good? What is good about being your own boss? Um, I mean, I, I pretty much wake up every day with a smile on my face. I wake up doing what I love. Um, but you know, there, there's a lot of struggle that comes with being your own boss. And I, you know, when I was 18, 19, that's when I told myself, I'm going to be my own boss. That's what I want to do. And when I envisioned that I didn't expect it to be so hard and i didn't expect it to come with so many hardships what's the hardships um being being staying focused um being able to balance out personal life with work and you know staying keeping that drive constantly i mean i i was young i was young i'm still young and you know we're trying to balance out like i said that personal life because i still want to go out and, you know, hang out with friends, enjoy my life, be a little careless and carefree. But I, every, I'm i starting to realize that I can't do that. Um, it has to be perfectly planned in order for me to be able to do that. It is. It is. But, you know, there's just a, I feel like there's a lot of comfort with, you know, I guess being having somebody – there, there's comfort with having to work for somebody. I mean, you kind of know you're expect you're told what you're expected, and you just do that. When me, the entrepreneurial lifestyle, I feel like you're kind of in the dark a lot of the time. You, you can look for mentors, and you know you work with other people to grow and learn. But at the end of the day, it's all it's all on you. And the buck if, stops with you. Yep. And if you're not making the steps you need to make or the sacrifices. Um, you you won't succeed. We're getting a call. Hello, you're listening to Up in Your Business with Carrie McCoy. Do you have a call for me or Maxie? Yes. Hi, Carrie. It's Adrian. Hey, Adrian McNally. Actually, have a question um, <laughs> regarding where I left off in the show before I called. Maxie was talking about balancing his work and private life. And I know that you, Carrie, had to work two jobs when you started up your business. So I'm wondering how Max is balancing that, if he has to work extra jobs or if Raiz is fully funding his life. That's a good question, Adrian. Thank you. Um, so what's, uh, I'm glad she asked that. So Wicked Rose, part of the reason that actually came about was because Raiz was, it's such a, Raiz is a very hard industry in terms of fashion. It's a hard industry to, um, fashion is a tough industry, extremely tough. And I, I admire you for doing that. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Um, but I knew I, I was dead set on being an entrepreneur. I wanted to be my own boss. And over the years while doing Raiz, um, you know, I taught myself how to screen print just solely for Raiz apparel. But people, you know, as I started building my network, started gaining a following, people were coming to me and asking me, where do I get my shirts printed? And I told them, you know, it's all done in-house. And then people would want to get that service um, provided to them. And I'd, I'd turn it down. I'd turn it down just because I wanted to really just focus on Raiz. It was at such a, an early stage in its development that I felt like I really, really needed to focus on it. 
But I got to a point with Rice where I felt comfortable. I had more people helping me with it. So that's when I went ahead and made the decision to launch a second business, which is Wicked Rose Printing Company. And it wasn't at, it wasn't until that point that I went a uh, uh, full time entrepreneur. That is how I make my living. I pay all my bills. How how I live, more or less. You know, that's how I, I enjoy my personal life and everything. But you had equipment you had to buy. Yeah, I mean, it's just so you're selling enough through your printing company, Wicked Rose, to pay your make your note payment, mm-hmm. make your um, I guess your rent on your building, mm-hmm. and pay your utilities, mm-hmm. and then I guess you're pulling the ink yourself, probably. Yep, that's right. And then and then you're probably invoicing. Mm-hmm. And well, see, Raise it wasn't. It was thankful. I was thankful for Raise Apparel because Raise Apparel was that's where a lot of my investment for screen printing came. And it, you know, it was over a course of two years. So you'd made enough money in the first few years of your apparel business Mm -hmm. to have a little nest egg Mm -hmm. to start your screen printing business. Correct. And I mean, you know, unusual. When I started, when I did raise apparel, yeah, I worked at, I had a job. I was working at um, Zoomies, which is a skate shop, and I Mm. I was an assistant manager there for about um, two and a half years. And that's actually where I met Adrian. Um, (laughs) And, um, so, yeah, you know, I, I was having that income, but Raiz Apparel was just constantly growing and growing and growing. And I was really good about, you know, reinvesting all the money that came in into things that would benefit me in the future. That is so crucial. That is the reason why I worked the jobs I worked with so I could take Arkansas Flag and Banner's money and reinvest it back exactly. into it. And then I lived off of my cocktail waitress uh-huh. business. How many hours a day do you think you or how many hours a week do you think you work? Um, I'd say 50, 60 or so. And that's just between Ray's Apparel and Wicked Rose. And I mean, I have to, I have to, if I'm going to keep making, you know, make a living off of it. And if I want to make the, I want, if I want to reach the goals that I have for both companies, I have to, and I'm, I should honestly be working more than that. You know, the sign of a true entrepreneur is when you see opportunities like you did in the second one, you kept saying, no, I'm not going to, mm-hmm. I'm not going to screen print. No, I'm not going to screen print. Well, that's exactly how I ended up screen printing is desert storm war broke out. I couldn't find, uh, I couldn't buy the flags from the people I had been buying the flags from. And I decided, well, I'm going to have to start screen printing. Yeah, exactly. So it's just this opportunity presents itself and a true entrepreneurial sees it and can't stand it and has to seize it and exactly. jump on it. Exactly. Drives you crazy, doesn't it? It does. It does. But I mean, it, you know, if you're able to break through that barrier and just take those leaps and teach yourself and just grow in whatever means possible, then you benefit from those. You know? Mm hmm. So the good is, is, you know, you're getting to have your outlet, your creative outlet. Mm-hmm. You're getting to be an entrepreneur and be your own boss. I'm the, happy. That's that's my biggest thing. I'm you, happy. You wake up every day and you're mm-hmm. excited to go to work and, you know, kill the day, crush the day. Yep. But the bad is you're you're not guaranteed a paycheck. Nope. That's right. And it is the biggest headache in the world. I mean, it's just... It's constantly eating at you that, you know, you might not have enough at the end of the of the day or the end of the month. But it, there's also a lot of good that comes with that because through that struggle, it makes you push. You know, you don't you either have to sink or swim. And, you know, I always choose to swim and I've I've never you know, I've struggled, but I'll never sink because I think the whole sink and swim thing, that's a choice. I think a lot of people become entrepreneurs because they not so much because they're wanting to have all this control over other people, but maybe it's because they just don't want other people to have control over them. Mm-hmm. So what's the hardest conversation that you've ever had to have with a coworker or a team member? Um, so really, when I started bringing in people onto the team, um, I mean, I I was what twenty two, twenty one, and but you started when you were eighteen. Mm-hmm. That's when it all started, like the pocket t shirts and sewing. But then it started growing when you were twenty one. Mm-hmm. And I and I took it serious, and I was like, okay, I need a team. I want to make it, you know, like an official official thing. And um, I mean, one of the biggest struggles I had was properly managing not myself, but a team. How do I how do I get the whole the whole thing going smoothly and you know procedures i guess right and i mean planning accordingly because i wasn't i was no longer um you know responsible for just myself 
I was responsible for a few other people who, you know, are looking at me on what to do next or what they need to be doing. And at, I, I did struggle with that a whole lot at the beginning. Um, but I learned, you know, how crucial communication was, how crucial planning and executing things c- properly is. You struggled with the fact that everybody was looking to you for answers or you struggled with the fact that everybody wanted you to tell them what to do? Um, more of like looking for answers. Cause I mean, since I, you know, everything was so new to me a lot of the time, I, I didn't even know the answers myself. You know, I was still in the, in the dark about a lot of the things I was still going through the whole trial and error process. So they would come to you and say, what do you want us to do about this? And you go, you know, they, they they were looking for a, a more uh, solidified plan. And sometimes, you know, I didn't have that. Sometimes I, it took me longer to come out with these, come up with these plans. And then when I did did have these plans, um, executing was a whole different thing. You know, how do, how am I going to actually execute this to the best of its ability? And it was all trial and error, trial and error, trial and error. Could you have learned it in school? Um, I'm sure I could have, but not. There's to me, there's a big you you going things by the book. You learn a lot. You know, you learn the insides of things, how to how to mentally prepare yourself for these things. But when it's completely different when you actually are physically having to do these things. When you're in the trenches. Exactly. Do you know how to from you went to school for entrepreneurship? Did you learn how to read your financials, your income statement, your balance sheet? Yeah, yeah. That's actually one of the few things I I, I did learn. And I really want to go back because now I'm at a point where a lot of those things are more important now, you know, the internal things about the companies and I want to be better at that. And I know that's, that's my responsibility. They'll make sense to you now when you go back. Cause when you first do it, you're like, well, just, if I could just pass this test. Yeah, exactly. And now it's like, I, I, when I go back, it's going to be with a true purpose with actual ambition. And I mean, I'm not going to lie to you, you know, uh, school wasn't always my favorite, but now I I have a you know a need to want to go back and want to better myself. Mm-hmm. You're, I want to take a break. Tell everybody they're listening to Up in Your Business with me, Carrie McCoy, and I'm speaking today with Maxie Dominguez, founder of Raiz Apparel and of the Wicked Rose Printing Company. <laughs> you said you wanted to leave. Little Rock mm-hmm. and moved to a bigger city. Mm-hmm. You also said, I love this, you're so young and full of ideas. And he wanted to get sticks and bricks. I said, that's expensive. Sounds like you got sticks and bricks since I last talked to you because you have a printing shop. Mm. So So I don't it's not like an open to the public brick and mortar. Pretty much I I've worked with what I got. I literally just work out of a small space, which is a, a garage. And in this garage, it's just private to me and my workers. And I, that's, to me, that, that that was important to be able to, you know, save money as much as I can. And I was able to get a good little spot for a good price, relatively. And now I can actually afford to bring in extra hands because I played my cards right in that sense. So you're not living in the house and working out of your garage like I did? Oh, no. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Guess what I did? I ran Arkansas Flag and Banner out of my house for, I believe... Seven or nine years somewhere in there. It's the smartest thing you can do. And um, what's funny is, um, you know, at my house, um, I had a guy just randomly knock on my door. And he was a door salesman. And, you know, he I actually opened my garage. I was printing and everything. And he saw all my printing equipment. He's like, oh, you're a screen printer. And I was like, yeah. And he um, he told me he actually owned his own printing business before, his printing company. And he told me all about it. And he told me that the smartest thing you could do, and this was great advice, which is if, if you got something that's working and you, you know, don't, don't constantly try to grow. If it's working, keep it working. It, you don't need to invest in crazy machinery that you probably don't need. You don't need to invest in a huge warehouse with more space that you probably won't need. What's working, keep it working. Don't, that's great advice. Mm-hmm. It was, it was, and it gave me a peace of mind because uh, I constantly felt that I needed to get more equipment, new things to make it seem, I guess, like P- it was push, push, push. Right, like I guess that's what gave me my um, comfort that I was succeeding. But it doesn't come in that; it comes in just you know the actual business you're putting out. I think it's kind of part of your DNA, though. You're going to be always pushing, pushing, pushing. But I made that mistake. I went out and bought a two hundred fifty thousand dollar piece of equipment. 20 years ago 
and it never did pay for itself. I ended up having to put a second mortgage on my house. So I think that was great advice. Yeah, and I mean... Because you get wound up into believing your own stuff. If I get this big equipment, then everything's going to change. Right, there's a fine balance. You know, you got to be realistic, but you also got to have drive and think big. You got that's exactly right. You can be you can how do you um, how do you think big without making big mistakes sometimes because exactly. you kind of believe your own BS as Mark said last week on the radio <laughs> show. He said be careful of believing your own BS. So you're not uh, as wound up about getting uh, bricks and sticks. Um no. You know, I really would like to get a brick and mortar for the brand. Brick and mortar. Uh-huh. For um So you could sell your clothes out of it. Right. And just because I I do have plans to eventually want to move to like I said a bigger city, but I don't want to leave Little Rock until I've left my mark here. A solidified mark where, you know, people can shop my brand when they want to. And yes, I have an online store, but I really want to, I guess, contribute to my community. And I feel like that's something that I could do for my community. Have a, I guess, a, you know, a store for people, a place where they can go and really experience the lifestyle that comes Would with it be the in downtown Little Rock? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Uh, your, your family's from Argentina, mm-hmm. but your mother lives in Little Rock? Yeah, she does. She wouldn't like you probably moving off too much. No, but I'm sure she'll understand. Would you recommend being self-employed to other people? Yes, um, if if they're willing to work extremely hard and you know put in a lot of sacrifice. You know, a lot of people work really, really hard, um, even when they're working for other people. Mm-hmm. Now, look, I'm looking at all my people <laughs> around here. <laughs> they're all smiling at me. Um, but there's that one thing that you just cannot quench that fire in you of always waking up for the new for the next thing even this radio show that we started a year and a half ago i mean i don't know why i'm doing it do you feel fulfillment from it so much that's why you do it it's a you found an outlet for for yourself and i think that's important for everybody whether it be whether you benefit from it or whether you just enjoy what you're doing i think it's it's good for us it's healthy it's for our health Mm-hmm. We need to have an outlet mm-hmm. to be stimulated all the time. So, what's mm-hmm. your next? Uh, what's your next line going to be? Have you already been working on it? Oh uh, yeah, I actually I'm ahead of schedule, which is great. Um, I have two collections that are already ready to go. Um, Can you tell us, or is it a secret? Uh, it's more of a secret. Oh how I, fun! I, <laughs> oh how fun! <laughs> but uh, when are they going to come out? Um, I'm thinking. I really want to start making some marketing moves for it end of March, but probably early April. Oh, soon. Yeah, very soon. Um, that's actually something that uh, I've implemented to the brand for this year for our campaign is I want things to be m- moving at a fast pace. What's your website? Tell everybody what your website address is. It's raizapparel.com. Spell it. R-A-I-Z apparel, A-P-P-A. R-E-L. I'm going to, well, it's just the raiz that we need to spell because <laughs> it's, it, it's, it, to me, it, spell, it looks like ra. I, what did I say earlier? Now I can't even say it. <laughs> I mean, people say raise, people say there, rise, I think that's, uh, they say okay. I was saying ra- raise, uh-huh. uh, but well, no, that's what it is. It's raise. Right. Oh <laughs> and you say it so many times you get, you know, you confused yourself. <laughs> think of it like rye. Like the, the plant, rye, uh-huh. and then ease. Uh-huh. Well, that would be like R-Y-E-Z-Z, not R-A-I-Z. Okay, <laughs> okay, it's it's Argentina for root or origin, uh-huh. which is so you. Mm. I hope everybody goes online and looks at you because your hair's grown another six inches since oh, the last time I saw you. Four next time. You and Crystal Gale. Um, <laughs> um S- say the name of your uh, website one more time. It's Raiz Apparel. R A I Z. Okay, there we go. And you're going to launch printing company. Does that have a website? Uh, no, we actually don't have a website for it. So Wicked how Roast. does someone get screen printed from Wicked Roast? Good we question, have, Tim. We have a uh, yeah, that was a very good question. We have a Facebook page, um, and that's traditionally where I market a lot of uh, you know the company, and then Instagram. Instagram has been our biggest um, platform to do business with our clients just uh we're able to showcase our work through pictures where and what's great is raiz has been able to uh build a network for me to already kind of dive into from with wicked rose so you know and then my own personal network you know people have already been wanting that service so people 
when people know about Raiz, they usually know about Wicked Rose. So if you have your face, you could pick up, you could make up another Wicked Rose Facebook page, mm-hmm. and then when people go to Raiz Facebook page, they could see the other business there, right? Yep, correct. And like, what's you know, I try to cross promote the two as much mm-hmm. as possible. Like with Raiz uh, Apparel. On all every single one of my posts, I tag Wicked Rose. Oh, okay. And it's relevant because Wicked Rose is technically the company that prints all of Raiz. Mm-hmm. So that's how I try to cross promote those two, and it works. It works. I love I, I love all of your themes. I can't wait to see what your new lines are that come out. I have a pri- I have a I have my own t shirt for you Ooh. that I didn't have you print, but I'm gonna have you print from now on. How about that? Oh no, I can't because another one of my employees prints this one for me. I forgot. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Like it says up yours. Up in your business with Carrie McCoy. I love it. I, love it. <laughs> I knew I love you it. would. Up yours. Let it's me, your let me attitude. Show my people. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Here, show my people. <laughs> Up yours. <laughs> Up yours. That is so you. I love it. You can rip that off if you Thank want you so to. Much. <laughs> You're welcome. Who's our guest next week, Tim? Our guest next week is, I believe, Wilson. Is that? Oh. <laughs> what, what is he again? I'm so confused. Uh, Why is he going to be our guest? Uh, okay, he's being funny. <laughs> Wilson Kennedy is a subcontractor of Arkansas Flagging Banner that I've gotten to know over the last decade, and he is funny and thinks i'm funny and when we get together we laugh non-stop and he's going to come and roast me next week he's going to interview me <laughs> that's why tim was being like oh who is our guest <laughs> next week it's me i'm the guest next week and wilson kennedy is going to roast me and boy you talk about a cynic i hope he's listening <laughs> he he is the ultimate cynic i love it he's a great guy and he's smart as a whip. He's self-employed also. So we'll talk a little bit about his business. Anything else I need to say? Nope. I think that's it. Hey. My suggestion uh-huh. would be check out alternative social media sites that are beginning to pop up. Because what I've noticed is the bot problem on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter doesn't exist on Minds, Gab, Steam It, and all of the new social media because it's all just people. Huh. So I've never even heard those. of those. I will. That's, thank you. I appreciate that. I've never even heard of those, Yeah, two. I haven't either, honestly. He's going to have to write them down for you at, uh-huh. the, end of the, at the end. Yeah, I can do that. Uh, 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 Maxie, give me one word to sum you up. Um, oh, God. <laughs> That's a good question, isn't it? One word to sum me up. Um, I know it. What? You tell me. Creative. Creative. Okay. I, I, can, I, can, uh, I like uh, that oh, one. Oh, no. I got another one. Okay. Real. Okay, creative and real. Those are two. I love those two, honestly. Mm, that's because they're you. you <laughs> I'm glad you. you love yourself because that's you. <laughs> hey, everybody should love themselves. That's so true. That's, that's true love right there. <laughs> we didn't even practice that. If you have a great entrepreneurial story that you would like to share, I would love to hear from you. Send a brief bio and your contact info to questions at upyourbusiness.org. And finally, to our listeners, thank you for spending time with me. If you think this program has been about you, you're right, but it's also been for me. Thank you for letting me fulfill my destiny. My hope today is that you've heard or learned something that's been inspiring or enlightening and that it, whatever it is, will help you up your business, your independence, or your life. I'm Carrie McCoy, and I'll see you next time on Up In Your Business. You've been listening to Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy a production of flagandbanner.com. If you miss any part of the show or want to learn more about UIYB, go to flagandbanner.com and click on Radio Show or subscribe to her weekly podcast whenever you like, wherever you like to listen. All interviews are recorded and posted the following week with links to resources you heard discussed on today's show. And Carrie's goal is to help you live the American dream.